Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this episode of Practical Applications of Science, we're going to be covering two studies on similar topics related to strength training for injury prevention. So the first study here from 2014 is a meta-analysis which is basically looking at different exercise interventions and how effective they are at reducing the injury risk in team sport athletes. So in this meta-analysis, they essentially categorized exercise into four different categories. The first one was stretching, second one was strength training, then it was proprioception training, and then combined training methods, so a combination of different exercise interventions. And then pooling all the studies together, they came up with how effective these exercise interventions were at reducing injury risk. So if we have a look first here at stretching, there was essentially no significant effect of stretching on preventing injuries in team sport athletes. Strength training had an enormous effect on preventing acute and chronic injuries of team sport athletes. There was nearly a 70% reduction in injury risk. Proprioception training also had a significant effect. It was able to reduce injuries by over 50%. And then combined training methods, most likely these included some sort of strength or proprioception training, also had quite a significant effect on reducing injury risk. But really the standout exercise intervention was strength training. However, this study simply just looked at which methods were most effective and not the mechanisms behind why they were most effective. So these same authors in 2018 did another meta-analysis trying to examine the mechanisms by which strength training was so effective at reducing injury risk. So essentially, this is the mechanisms that they proposed. So when we undergo strength training, it gives us some certain adaptations that may be beneficial to help reduce our risk of both chronic injury and also of acute injury. So let's first have a look at the factors that can reduce our risk of chronic overuse injury. So if we're an athlete that is not a strength athlete, so we're not a weightlifter or a powerlifter or some variation of that, strength training is going to provide some variation in loading our tissues that is not the same as the sport that we are constantly playing. So if we're always running around, changing direction, as is pretty typical in most team sports, strength training is going to be some sort of variation to that. So from a chronic perspective, that's going to help our tissues adapt differently over time and not always be stressed in the same motor patterns and in the same way every time. This over time is likely to help us reduce our risk of chronic overuse injury. Another factor is gradual tissue conditioning. So from strength training, we have muscular adaptations and we also have adaptations to the connective tissue. Those tissues over time can get stronger and more robust in order to withstand the rigors of the sport you play. So if those tissues becomes, can become stronger and more robust, they're gonna be more resilient to breaking down over time, especially during the seasons and periods that we're playing lots of competitive games and doing lots of training. The other factor that can help reduce both chronic injury and also acute injury is the carryover of strength training to improved coordination and technique. So for example, if our strength training is involving full body movement patterns, those motor patterns may have transfer over to things like running, cutting, changing direction, etc. So if we can be more efficient with our technique, we can both reduce the risk of chronic injury because we're moving more efficiently and therefore loading the tissues that need to be loaded and reducing the stress on the tissues that are likely to break down. Furthermore, if we're cutting properly, changing direction, running properly, our risk of inducing some sort of acute traumatic injury is going to be substantially reduced. Again, for the same reason that with high output movements like sprinting, changing direction, we want to be loading the tissues that need to be loaded and taking the stress off the tissues that shouldn't be stressed during those movements. And strength training can help with that coordination and technique and those motor patterns to help ingrain them better so that we can move more efficiently on the field of play. So then moving here into the factors that are specifically only going to reduce the risk of acute injury, meaning an injury that happens in a split second and it's a one-off thing, it's not something that develops over time. So for example, a hamstring tear or an ACL rupture. So strength training can increase the failure thresholds of relevant tissues. So similar to this point here, the gradual tissue conditioning, 
if we can strengthen those tissues up, they're going to increase the tolerance of those tissues to stress. And that both over time can help be more robust to wear and tear, but also during explosive high intensity exercise can help make sure that tissue is strong enough in that particular instant to withstand the forces to not essentially break. So a great example of this may be eccentric strength training for the hamstrings to prevent hamstring strain injuries during sprinting. If we can get those hamstrings eccentrically strong during sprinting during that late swing phase where the hamstrings are lengthening rapidly with high velocities, if those hamstrings and those hamstring tendons are strong enough, they are less likely to tear. And the last point is psychological preparedness. So essentially, if an athlete feels as though they've been doing strength training, they feel strong and they're confident in their movement, they are probably less likely to induce a acute traumatic injury. So this point here is a whole can of worms in itself, but essentially the psychological component can never be underestimated of any sort of training and in particular strength training. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already.